होम थिएटर्स इज अ वेरी वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड टॉपिक एंड आई एम श्योर बाय नाउ दोज हु फॉलन फॉर द ट्रैप ऑफ बाइंग होम थिएटर सिस्टम हैव ऑलरेडी रियलाइज दैट सिलेक्टिंग अ होम थिएटर सिस्टम इज नॉट एट ऑल इजी एंड स्पेशली दोज ऑफ यू हु हैव ओवरकम दैट चैलेंज एंड सिलेक्टेड द सिस्टम दे नाउ नो द नेक्स्ट पार्ट इज डूइंग द कनेक्शन एंड दैट्स वाई इन आर टूडेज वीडियो आई तन मेहमेदा योर होम सिनेमा कंसल्टेंट और होम थिएटर वाले भैया विल बी शेयरिंग विथ यू सम ऑफ द इनसाइट्स ऑफ कनेक्टिंग the main console or the main heart of your home theater system that is the av receiver now don't be scared looking at the back panel i can see that these ports are already scaring you off but you may not need all of them having a knowledge of these is equally important though cuz in future if you want to add any new product or if you want to do some iterations in your home theater system you need to know if your av receiver supports that and in our today's video we are using this denon x 4700h av receiver which has got these many ports in your case if you are using any lower or a different brand model these placements might vary the number of ports might vary but at least these buttons would still be the same in the color configuration so let us find out what does each one of these denote Now the very first thing that you need to do when you connect a AV receiver is connect it to its power source and the power source in this case is right over here so the power supply cable is supplied to you with the AV receiver that needs to be connected here now some of them are two pin some of them are three pin this one end goes here and the second end goes to your socket the second port that you need to be careful of is these two golden ports these are nothing but your wifi and bluetooth adapters these are antennas that have again come along with the manual box of this av receiver that needs to be inserted in these two corners the next thing that we all want to connect is obviously the speakers now where would the speakers be connected if you are using passive speakers and if you are going to take the power from the av receiver then you need to connect the speakers to these red and black ports each of the port has got a nomenclature for instance this is front right then there is front left then there is center then we have surround right surround left and so on now front left and front right is not according to the tv but it is according to the distance or your sitting position for instance if i am sitting on a chair and looking at the screen the speaker on my left in the front is going to be front left similarly the speaker on the right in the front area is going to be front right surround left surround right so if by that analogy if you connect those speakers to these respective binding post either and by unscrewing this and putting the cable inside or by using a banana plug and putting the banana plug inside this connector these are the two ways by which you can connect your speakers to these speaker binding post now let us look at the next product that you are going to connect to your av receiver the next product is going to be the subwoofer the subwoofer is going to give you the base and it does not need a direct power from the av receiver so that is why you are not going to connect your subwoofers or you will not find a subwoofer port in these red and black areas you will find it in this area wherein you will have two ports for instance in this amplifier so you have subwoofer 1 and you have subwoofer 2 as the two ports which are generally colored in black to identify them easily now the reason why you use these ports and not the speaker binding post for subwoofer is cuz subwoofers are active which means that they are going to just take the signal from the av receiver but they are not going to take the power from the amplifier that's why these are your amplification channels and these are your signal channels the next product that you would connect to your av receiver would be the input media devices as well as the output devices now the input devices are very easy to connect over here in case they are using hdmi cable for instance if you have got a tata sky hd connection then that has got an hdmi output which needs to go into the input of the cable satellite port similarly if you have got a playstation or xbox console then it would go into the gaming console which is right over here similarly let's say if you have got apple tv and media shield pro or any of the media players then that can be connected to your media player and if you have got blu ray player it will go again into the blu ray port so you have got a very easy understanding for the hdmi connection but the complication will start when you are using hdmi output ports for instance 
you have got TV at the back and you have got a projector screen as well. Now in this case, where would you connect the TV and projector? To simplify, the EARC port is something which you ideally need to connect to your TV. And the second port of your HDMI output needs to go to projector because it is going to carry only video signal. Now some of you, if you are using only projector that to ARC or ERC compatible, then in that case, you will have to again go back to the TV monitor port because it is going to pull out the audio signal back from your video device. It may happen sometimes that your TV model is a little old which does not have ARC or ERC output and in that case, the only way to pull out the audio from TV is Toslink optical or SPDIF connection. Either of these three ports need to get connected to this TV audio input in the AV receiver. Similarly, another scenario is that we have had a client who said that Tanmay, we want to buy this home theater with a TV but I don't want Tata Sky to always be connected to my home theater system. Let's say my grandparents are using and they don't want the home theater or surround sound experience. So in that case, what happens is your, AV, your Tata Sky setup box sends the signal directly to the TV and TV will not necessarily have optical output port again. In this case, what you can do is you can pull out the audio from Tata Sky using optical connection and connect it to the second media player Toslink optical input of the AV receiver. So that whenever you turn on the amplifier and select this input, then and then only you will get the home theater sound. In other cases, the HDMI cable from Tata Sky will send the video as well as audio directly to the TV. Similarly, if you don't have Toslink as well as you don't have HDMI ARC or ERC and you have got this orange connections at the TV back panel, then you can connect this coaxial cable directly to from your TV or from your media player to the AV receiver's input port. Next up we have is the RS232 port. Now RS232 port is one of the most common ports used by automation agencies to get this AV receiver onto automation platform. So if you are planning for a new home automation system, then check if they can use the RS232 port to connect this AV receiver to your home automation controller. Next up, we have the remote IR in and out ports. In is something wherein let's say the AV receiver is placed in some other area or other room and you cannot operate it. Then in that case, an external IR signal will be connected to the input port so that you can have the remote control still operated in the room in spite of the AV receiver being in some different zone. Next up we have is the network port which is used for wired connectivity which is recommended while you are upgrading or updating your firmware. These yellow ports are your video input and output ports. In analog you will not get full HD or 4K signals. You will get a little lower than that as the input or output signal. Just like we have got the analog video output or video input, we have also got analog audio input and audio output ports. The audio inputs are used, let's say you have got a turntable or an old CD player which you need to connect to the AV receiver, then these analog ports can be used for that. White stands for left, the red stands for right. Apart from the analog inputs in the yellow white red format, you will also have these RGB color ports at the back panel of your AV receiver. These are for component videos or component audio inputs and outputs that are available in the AV receiver. In today's time, not many people use it. But in case you have got some old product or old VCR which needs to be connected to the AV receiver, then you may need these ports. And lastly, we all recently learned in our power amps video that for your power amplifier connection to this amplifier, what you need is a pre-out port. Now, if you haven't watched that video, then I highly recommend you to check that video but after this video using the link above and to understand what a pre-out is, pre-out in a simplified manner is wherein it will just take the signal from the AV receiver but the power to the speakers will be provided by a separate or an external power amplifier. In that case, you have got a pre-out port for each of the speakers. You can see it for the front left right, you can see one port for the center, similarly for your surround speakers, the back surround, height channels, everything is possible in this and these are all RCA unbalanced output ports. So let me know if you like these kind of explanation videos in the comments box and if you found this video valuable and it gave you some more insights about AV receiver and its back panel then don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. That's it from my end. I Tanmay Mehta, your home cinema consultant or home theater wale bhaiya. 
will be seeing you all in the next video thank you so much